Hello everybody, this is Stephen Whitfield with Drilling Contractor outside of the 2024 IADC SPE International Drilling Conference and Exhibition in Galveston, Texas. Now in a moment, we're going to be speaking with three people who presented a paper here at this conference. Fred Florence, co-founder of the Drillbotics program, and two students who were team leads of projects that were part of this program, Muhammad Suleiman of the University of Stavanger and Harry Solisamidis of the Klaus Saul University of Technology. Now, Mohammed and Harry were team leads of projects that aim to solve issues that are commonly seen within the industry. We're gonna to talk to them a little bit about those projects. And we're also gonna to talk to Fred about the value of the Drillbotics program as a whole and what it says about the young minds that are coming up to lead this industry moving forward. So Fred, the projects that we're talking about here today are all part of the Drillbotics uh, competition. So can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Well, we started this program in 2014, 2015 to have university students build a miniature rig that would encounter normal drilling dysfunction. And they have to learn how to recognize it and mitigate it and, and drill a well successfully. And over the years, we've increased this program more and more. So we started off with d just to drill a hole. Later, we started to drill a directional well. And now we're drilling a multi-planar directional well. So they have to drill down, across, and make a turn. And this is in a one and a half inch well bore. And so the, the team from Germany has got a rotary steerable tool with all the sensors, all the measurements, all the controllability in a one and a half inch hole. And anybody in the industry knows that's pretty hard. Well, during the pandemic, we found that the students could not get in the lab because the schools were closed down. So we set up a virtual rig and let them work remotely as a team. And so initially it was just to drill a well and then to drill a directional well. And then this last year we gave an option of, as you're drilling, we're gonna introduce a kick. They have to detect a kick, try to, try to control it with managed pressure drilling techniques. And if that doesn't work, they have to close the BOP. So we've seen these teams develop over the years from going with just a simple drill a hole in a rock to being able to drill a directional well. Oh, and there's one small problem. They get 30 minutes notice and they can't do anything manually. They push a button and it all has to happen autonomously. Well, that sounds like quite a challenge there, I would say. It's a huge challenge. So let's talk a little bit about the value that something like Drillbotics sort of provides for the industry. I mean, what would you say the value proposition is? Well, for me, it's to show people outside the industry the different technologies that are involved for us to be able to drill a directional well. And these teams cannot do it just with petroleum engineers. They have to have controls expertise. They have to have the ability to design the system mechanically, electrically, understand these dysfunctions. They have to be able to communicate with people f with a different skill. So we have students getting out of school that already have specific industry experience. They've learned how to work with others. They've learned how to talk with jargon that belongs to a completely different discipline. So when they go to work in the industry in a multidisciplinary environment, they've got that skill set when you hire them. So within this industry right now, there's so much talk about young professionals and sort of the students, the young minds that are coming up and, and, and they're gonna lead this industry moving forward. So you look at some of the things that, that are coming out of Drillbotics. What do you think that that says about sort of the next generation of people who are gonna be working and solving the problems that we face in the oil field? I, I feel very confident that they will be doing this. Uh, we give them more and more problems and the fun part is they don't know it can't be done, and they find a solution. It's phenomenal what they come up with. And, and what I really like about it is that they, they are learning from in the industry, but they're carrying it to the industry. We hope that we can move into new areas next year, such as geothermal drilling. Some of these things that will appeal to other students besides just the petroleum engineers. And our industry needs people from all these other disciplines every day. Our industry has so many technical challenges within it that no one discipline can handle all those challenges. And these guys are learning how to deal with that and to deal with it as a team. So Fred, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you for the invitation, I really appreciate it. So Mohammed, you were one of the team leads of uh, one of the projects here, uh, autonomous well control on a virtual rig. Let's talk a little bit about this. 
And I know there is a lot to sort of go through with that, but if you can sort of tell us sort of what issues were you looking to kind of address with this project and how did this project address those issues? Can you kind of go into that a little bit? Yeah, so the objective of this project was to uh, implement a standardization process for the automation. So SPE, there is a there is a subcommittee in SPE, it's DSATS, that's working on the automation of the drilling. Uh, so we were actually there to check or take that concept and implement it in, into a virtual rig and to weigh like how the standardization of this automation works. So what we implemented is these ads, uh, sorry, DVs. Uh, in this in this one, it's kind of a standardization of cement, uh, uh, semantics of the real-time signals. So what we are getting the real-time signals from the rig, it's kind of as, uh, and we make a control models on that signals. So what, what's, what's the main thing is we can actually use, if we are using the standardization process in all our other rigs as well, we can use our model or someone else's model on any other rig as well. So, so we were actually trying to uh, use this concept and try, trying to prove that, yes, it works. So what were some of the key things that you learned from this project? Well, it's all about the automation. So we learned a lot about how to handle the data, how we read the sensors data, how we actually connect uh, to the remote rig. And also we uh, went through how we manage the challenges that we went through uh, during the virtual rig control and implementing the, the well control model in that one. So there was, there was a lot of learning and uh, uh, there were a lot of programming as well. Uh, there was also a kind of uh, drilling related knowledge that we need to learn before we can implement it into our automation process. So thanks again for letting us know about all this. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate your efforts. So Harry, let's talk a little bit about your project, about uh, building an autonomous directional drilling rig, and that sounds pretty cool too. Can you tell us a little about some of the industry challenges that you were looking to address with this project and how did the project kind of help address those challenges? Yeah, so in terms of industry challenges, this is a quite good question. Um, okay, this is a scaled down directional drilling rig, yeah, and we're building it in the lab scale. And I think the challenges that, that we address is in today's day and age, nothing is only one thing anymore, right? So in, in petroleum engineer, is, it is not enough to be just a petroleum engineer. You, you have to know something about mechanical engineering. You have to know something about... Um, programming you have to be like a interdisciplinary type of person in order to uh, really um, bring a benefit to the industry and so what we wanted to try is we wanted to to build a, a robot or a facility which allows students that are studying uh, petroleum engineering or that are studying mechanical engineering to give them the opportunity to um, uh, get in touch with other disciplines and not in a way like sitting in a lecture and hearing some professor talk. No, really, really come into the lab. This is the problem. Uh, we, we need to build a, uh, an RSS, so a small scale directional drilling tool, and it has to be 1.5 inch in diameter. And uh, yeah, everybody will then think, okay, what is an RSS? So everybody's going to look it up and they're going to come back and they say, okay, I'm a mechanical engineer, I have this and this solution. And then you're going to tell him, okay, do it. And uh, one month later, he will come up, he will come again with a solution. You will say, okay, look at this, optimize this, try something new out. And when he finishes it, then you can tell him, hey, you could go one step further and why not write the control algorithm for it? And uh, so you can, you can give people the opportunity to really learn different, different disciplines. And this could benefit students or young uh, engineers uh, in the industry coming up with new, new ideas and uh, new experience. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about like maybe some of the lessons that you've learned over the course of this project and what did you kind of take from all this? As I said before, you, you got to keep your, your range wide open. So there's not always one solution to a problem. You're going to be very flexible in, in all parts of, of, your, of the work that you do, especially when it comes to designing of an, of an robot. Uh, you're going to um, also sometimes admit that, that you're wrong and also accept other opinions. And um, yeah, this is something I took for me. And in terms of um, teamwork, so it was also the, uh, the first time I was ever in a position to, to manage uh, a team out of five guys. It might seem not so much, but 
if the people that are in the team are really engaged, it, it can be a, a challenging thing to do because you have to keep everybody motivated. You have to, especially if you don't pay them, right? So uh, you have to, to know how to deal with, um, with certain things. It's not like you can just say somebody, do this. No, you have to, um, to talk with them, see what they like to do and figure out what, uh, what, people, uh, what specialties people have and show them what they can do. Because most of the time, what I realized, people came into the lab and they were very nervous. They thought, oh, this is so complicated. I have no idea how this works. And if you come up to them and you give them a chance and say, hey, look, it's very simple. Look at this. Try this out. Show it to them once. They somewhat find their self-esteem and then they blow up and then they, can, they come back one week later with an even greater solution that, that you were anticipating, right? And this is what I what I what I what I took from it. It's um, how to interact with with uh, with people and how to motivate um, students. And, and yeah, this is it. Yeah. Well, Harry, thank you again for providing this perspective on this project. It's really cool to hear about. It. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you very much. Special thanks to Fred, Muhammad, and Harry for speaking with us today from the 2024 IADC SPE International Drilling Conference and Exhibition. This is Stephen Whitfield. Thank you for visiting Drilling Contractor.